Greetings, dear ones, I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. For these years, wherever we are, we speak of a paradigm shift that is occurring now. Thirty years ago, if you had asked, why is Cryon here? My partner would not know the answer. It took three or four years to get going for him to actually speak out loud to say these kinds of things. And even then, you would not have known. Even after book one in 1993, or book two in 1994, the why is Cryon here would not really have been fully revealed. It took many more years to realize that that was all a precursor so that you could see real, honest channeling and get used to one who would channel and no have no tricks, no marketing, but love. 30 years of cryon consistently. The message of empowerment and the fact that humans are here on purpose and are not a victim of the planet. Only recently has it truly been revealed why Cryon is here. And that is to assist you through a magnificent paradigm shift the biggest shift in consciousness on the planet, one that was expected. And you also realize that Cryon did not appear literally to my partner or anyone. Not really. Until something remarkable happened on this planet. In the late 80s, the Soviet Union ceased to exist and disarmed something that would have indeed caused war again. But the war would have been everything you thought it would have been. And very few would have survived, dear ones. And the earth would have lain there void and dark. And all that the Pleiadians had done to get to this place would have been for nothing. That's free choice. Were the star mothers prepared for that? Yes. How can you say that, Brian? Because they'd seen it before. Did you know that the Pleiadians had gone through their shift? We've said this before. With their own free choice, they had done that. This is a repeating cycle of victory and failure with free choice. Where humans would have taken a consciousness that was already low to the lowest and terminated themselves and not recovered. That was eminent. And some of you were there. You were living through those times. My partner speaks of it often. 50,000 nuclear weapons all pointed at one another, ready to be launched. How would you ever survive such a thing? A wild card appeared. And in that, history shifted and history changed and paved the way for you sitting there today. You think this is over dramatic? Let me ask you. Go back in history. Who predicted the fall of the Soviet Union in that way, in that time? A superpower that literally vanished almost overnight. They ran out of money, dear ones. That ought to tell you something. <laughs> but that was not predicted. It was not seen at all. That was a wild card. And that 
was something that happened because the consciousness of this planet was already starting on an upward scale. All of these things, if you lay them out and connect the dots, you'll see it. This is not an accident. All of these things coming together for the precession of the equinox as the indigenous of the planet had predicted, you're here. And the shift begins. Crying is here to facilitate the shift. 30 years ago, you didn't know that. The things that Cryon taught about, and I remember it vividly when my partner uttered the words, talking about the magnetic grid moving and why it would move, not truly understanding any of that or the influence of consciousness that it would have because only later would there have been experiments showing that consciousness and the magnetics were actually allied. They affect each other. That's science. That's proven. And the proof came with satellites, <laughs> not readers. Dear ones, you're looking at a new paradigm. One that sees consciousness very different than you ever saw it before. The shift that I speak of right now is real. It's as real as the love I speak of that is starting to permeate human nature. What's the difference? What is the shift really? I will tell you that the evolvement of human consciousness evolves from a low level of animal instinct and survival and fear into a higher level of understanding, compassion, benevolence, and love. Simply stated, dear ones, you're coming alive with the idea that the love of God, the creator, is inside you and can manifest and change things. That's the difference. Love. It's been overstated and understated. It's been made fun of. There are so many kinds of love on this planet. And that the one that we speak of is the love of the creative source that knows your name right now as you sit in the chair. And invites you to feel every cell of your body radiating with how beautiful it is and how connected you are. And how this planet is going through a shift that someday in history will be noted because you'll change the date system again before and after the consciousness shift where humanity stopped warring and killing each other in mass. Where they understood that every single human being wants the same basic thing. How long is this going to take, Ryan? We look around the earth right now. There's nothing like that. There are even segments of those which would call themselves spiritual, which will kill you if you don't agree with them. How is that going to straighten out? And the answer is slowly, dear ones, but it will. Oh, it will. It has to. Because at some point in time, the dark consciousness will become the minority, the real minority, forced into a corner of love around them. A love that would invite them to see that which is the truth, the light. And many of them won't. They will go extinct before they will turn to the light. It's going to happen that way. The battle is not over. But light is winning. And light will continue to win, dear ones. What is it you see again and again, I say, what is it? that you can point to that is so different today that you didn't have just a little while ago? And the answer is you're starting to reveal inappropriate things which have always been inappropriate. And they're coming to the surface. 
And there are those who performed inappropriate things because their fathers did and their fathers did and their fathers did. But now there's consequence. Because darkness is being seen. Whereas before it could always hide. In a darker energy, darkness is everywhere. It hides. You never get ahead. It's always going to fight you and light is going to lose. Well, that, dear ones, is changing. It has already changed. That's how we said earlier today in a former channel, you can walk into that unknown place and expect light. You can walk into an unknown place and say, I am glad I don't know what's going to happen. Because it's going to surprise me with something better than I thought. I want to tell you a story. It's a tiny little short metaphor. It's a parable, if you wish. This particular parable does not involve a human. So the parable will not have anything to do with woe. It's the first parable that doesn't have to do with woe. I would like to tell you about a community in a fish tank. It's a real fish tank in a real place. And the reason I say community, because if you were a fish, dear ones, you would really not be aware of what's on the other side of the glass. The fish see the reflections of themselves. They're not really truly aware of the outside, except, for instance, maybe light will change. They're aware that food will come then from the top of the tank, but they're not aware that a human is giving it to them. It seems to simply be part of the scenario of life, just like for you it rains. And you don't think, perhaps, that there's a giant up there sprinkling. The fish don't know. But this is a story about a community and the metaphor has knowing fish. It has fish that will be in the community and will be able to talk. And the fish we're going to talk about has a name. It's a tropical fish. It's a spiritual one. So it's an angel fish. <laughs> angel remembers the time when it started. Something was happening that had never happened before. And she had been in that community, in that very large fish tank that never moved. It was so big. It took her a long time to swim from one end of it to another. It was her world. She never really thought of it as being confining because it was so large, plenty of space for her to swim and to live. And over a period of years in her life with the other fish in the tank, there was sameness, and they really appreciated that. You want the temperature to be the same, the pH levels to be the same, the lighting to be the same, all of the things that were expected of a fish, not knowing they were in a tank, expecting perhaps they were in a lake or an ocean, was there. They didn't know any better. Angel was a happy fish and had friends that were also happy to be fish in the tank, living a life where things worked a certain way. They had certain expectations. The food arrived. The light was there. They were also aware of night and day because the owner carefully turned off the lights at night and on during the day. They had their sleep periods just like they might in the ocean. And then it changed. The first thing that Angel noticed, that they all noticed, was quite fearful. The light that always came on after the dark period didn't. Something else, not only didn't it come on, but it actually got darker. Suddenly this, this place where she had been for years with her friends was in the dark. It was, it was dim. They could see each other. But there was already anxiety. Now Angel had always been the one who would lead the others and say these things that happen are simply part of what happens. They're temporary. There will be a return to that which is normal. Don't worry. And if you could have a, a leader of the fish, she was. That wasn't all. 
the noise began. Now, noise is relative. If you want to define noise, it's the pressure of vibration against an eardrum that creates a sound in your head. Fish don't hear like you hear, but they sense the vibration, just like you do, and it's noise to them. For the vibrations, whatever frequencies that they would sense would be frequencies that you would sense, except that the noise would be different to a fish and startling. They can hear it. But the noise was severe. It was a vibration, literally, of the, of the whole world that they were in. The whole tank was vibrating for some reason. They were stressed. Now it was dark and dim. And now the fish even started talking to each other and saying, this is not right, something awful is going on. Those who were the intellects in the group said, we're not going to last. It's the end. We expected it someday. Here it is. Some of them said, it's time to, to leap out of this world and suffocate. We know we can do it. We've seen our friends. Angel said, there's nothing here to ever elicit that. You're going to be okay. Just wait and watch. Don't fear. If fish could sing songs, Angel would be leading them. But the vibration was so severe what happened to the gravel in the bottom of their tank what they thought was something that never changed because it was always there it's, it's a place where food would drop it was, a, it was a place where you would scavenge and eat and all the other things that fish did with the gravel in the bottom it was life sustenance and suddenly the gravel was oozing dirt and darkness and ugly things because the vibration was vibrating the gravel to such a degree that everything that was ever buried in the gravel was starting to come up. Some of the fish were having a hard time breathing. The water was so permeated with what used to be buried under the bottom that oxygen was tough to get. Then it got a little cold. This frightened them so much. Angel almost gave up. Angel almost said, they're right. We no longer have light. Now there's all this vibration, all these things floating up from the bottom. And the horror of the dirt we're seeing that we never thought was there. And the mold. And, and now it's getting colder. She held it together and she held them together. And she was right, because almost immediately after the cold came a normalcy, and it, it started to return. The noise went away, and the dirt settled, or was cleaned somehow by the filtering system, which a fish would say was the ocean. The darkness that was so ugly went away, and back came the light that they were used to. And all the fish looked at her and said, how did you know? How did you know that we would get back to this? And she said, we're not back. She said, everything is new. And they looked around and they saw it for the first time. All the things in the bottom <laughs> that used to be what you would call accoutrements of a fish tank, the little diver with the bubble, <laughs> the little house with the mermaid, they're all replaced with new little trinkets. And they spent the next few months investigating all of them, putting a little dirt on all of them, <laughs> making it theirs. Let me tell you what happened. Let's go outside the fish tank for a moment. There was a man who owned the apartment and a shift was coming in his life. He was going to renovate everything. And in the process of the renovation, he realized that a fish tank that was that big could not be moved. So the idea was this, keep them alive, keep them there, feed them, make sure they were still all right. But you got to disconnect the electricity from the lights and you got to put a board so nothing 
from construction will fall in the tank. And then the construction began, and it was the cabinets that the fish tank was on. It was vibrating the tank so severely it almost broke the glass. He didn't know that. He found out, backed off on it. In the process, it had murd, muckied the water because everything, all of the dirt had, had come up through the gravel. He didn't expect that. But he finished it all. And when it was done, the renovation was complete. It was hard even on him because construction is difficult. He had to move out for a while. That was uncomfortable. It was shift on a grand scale that he understood as the man in the apartment. But what did the fish know? Their world was isolated. They didn't see the bigger picture. That a renovation was occurring. And that things would occur which were brand new. They didn't know it. But the man also, he, he got a new temperature sensor because the other one broke in the process of being vibrated. He caught it in time, but the water got a little cold. He warmed it up. He changed the filtering system completely. As long as he was doing more electricity on the lights, why not go all the way? The fish were breathing better. They felt much different. Angel knew there was something different. And they were celebrating every moment. Do I have to paint a picture for you? In some ways, you're all the fish. And you have a reality that you've gotten used to, not understanding how Gaia works, how the creator works, how the shift works, how consciousness might work. All you see is trouble. <laughs> and there are those who would say, Cryon says it's getting lighter. I read my news. It's ugly. I'm having a hard time breathing because of all of this ugly darkness. If you're an American, you get to watch something that is profoundly dysfunctional in the government. Suddenly, everyone is at everyone else's throat Nothing is getting accomplished, and the whole idea is to beat up the other one. Doesn't matter what you believe anymore, you just want to beat them up. And that is what happens every single day. And if you get lucky enough, you'll put them in jail. Hmm. That's scary. It's scary because you've had 200 years of a democracy that worked. It worked to the degree that things got accomplished. That laws were a combination of ideas that were strong enough to have consensus because there was negotiation involved. When's the last time you saw that, American? And the answer is, it's been a while. That's frightening. You start looking at the, the dark things that are coming out of the woodwork, as they say, on this planet Oh, you haven't seen anything. We'll say it again. Wait till you see the extent of the horror of children's sexual slavery. It's bigger than you think. And it's almost everywhere. This has been covered so well for so long, the light is coming out, dear ones. And there will be those who caught up, and it'll startle you, it'll shock you, how it's funded and who's involved. And it's coming. And there will be those, again, who watch the news and say, it's the worst of the worst. We're doomed. Not understanding the fish tank is under construction. And there will come a time when the light comes on again. And the water is pure. And the air is better. And all of these things, although they may sound metaphoric, there's a truism to all of them. Because humanity, in its evolvement, will also clean itself up and the planet up. There'll come a time when you will attack the garbage patch in the ocean. 
and clean it. And it will take time. And there will be thousands involved because they understand it. And know that it is absolutely necessary. Did you ever think you'd see that? It's coming. Human nature is going to start to evolve into a paradigm never was there before, you didn't expect. And that's one of the reasons why you can feel free to step out and do things you've never done before. Because history is not repeating itself. Oh, dear ones, there are things that will be abominable to look at. Did you know that when light starts coming out, those who have been invested in the dark will also come out and show themselves in awful ways? Some of them will go out of their way to take a lot of people with them as they go out. It's their way of saying, take this, light. But they'll do it because light is winning. The dysfunctionals will become more dysfunctional. And the ones who have been invested in darkness will go right to the wall with it. I've told you this before. Watch for it. Look for it. It doesn't mean things are coming to an end. It means things are rejuvenating. It's going to be in your news even soon. Those are being called upon inappropriateness of a grand scale. Those who have known about things for a very long time. Governments who have authorized things for a very long time. And there will be those who will expose them. Only this time, the light will sustain itself. And there will be then penalties to pay. Careers that will be ruined. As is already happened on this planet. Those who feel that they can dabble in darkness and get away with it because others did it before them. Let there be notice right now that this fish tank that you live in is starting to improve itself. And that the vibration that you feel is the shift. The things coming up through the gravel have always been there underneath the sight that you've had. Now vibrating to a place where you can look at them and some of you are even breathing them. That's how ugly it can get. But dear ones, that's all in the cleaning process. That's rejuvenation. That's remodeling. Just ask angel. You've got an angel inside yourself, every one of you. It is an angelic form, this higher self, this soul. It is created in the image of God, meaning it's created in the love and compassion and the benevolence of the Creator. You have DNA that resounds in it, all 23 pairs of chromosomes, unique to you and those from the stars. This is who you are. This is what's going on, dear ones. Which kind of fish are you going to be? <laughs> Beautiful. <clears throat> and so it is. <clears throat>